Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with a Total War Warhammer 2 video meant to be the first of a series, hopefully covering ultimately all factions and discussing them one by one, figuring out what units are currently underpowered or seemingly forgotten and underperforming, and discussing how they might be fixed. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is partially because it's been something I've been thinking about doing for a while, just discussing you underpowered or a weak or unusable units um, or perhaps just slightly undertuned units and uh, units that have perhaps been overlooked by CA for quite a while discussing what could be done to fix them uh, it's also been kind of inspired by you guys because I found that when a lot of times when I cover patch notes uh, many of you voice your disappointment at the fact that certain units seemingly don't get touched upon and uh, seemingly do not get any help from CA despite the fact that they've been sitting in dumpster tier for a seemingly ages um, and oftentimes I do find myself agreeing with you guys. I do think uh, many of you do often raise good points. Um, and so I figured, you know, let's do a video, discuss some of it. And I figured what better faction to kick things off than Greenskins, who quite frankly have a reputation for a lot of subpar lords. Now I do want to mention a few things really quickly. Um, one, I will not be doing cross-faction units just yet. Uh, you might be wondering why the hell isn't a giant here or maybe even trolls. They're cross-faction units. I'm going to hold off on those, perhaps do a separate video for cross-faction units at a later point. Um, I think they're a bit, I think they're a bit of a separate animal, and I don't want to be covering them at any, each faction video. Uh, so, I, for example, I don't want to be doing Giants and Chaos, Greenskins, and Norska, and just repeating myself over and over and over. Uh, so, we're going to be, those will be separate. I'll also mention, I'm going to be including Heroes, Lords, and Regiments of Renown in this discussion. Um... Now, uh, in this situation here, we don't actually have any regiments of renown because I didn't feel any of the green skin regiments around were really that bad. But uh, I just wanted to mention that this will be the case for future videos. Now, regardless, with that sort of out of the way, let's dive right in and discuss what units we have lined up here. Now, first and foremost, our lords. We actually don't have heroes. I didn't think I don't think any of the green skin heroes are actually underpowered. Uh, some of them are certainly perhaps weak, though not, but not for the cost. Uh, and obviously, Greenskins are missing many lords and heroes, but that is not something to be discussed as far as strength goes. That said, many of the Greenskin lords, in varying fashions, uh, seem to be kind of subpar. Now, first is a lord who's not necessarily weak, but a little bit awkward, and that is Azag. Uh, and specifically, Azag on Skullmuncha. Uh, not Azag in all of his forms. I think Azag on foot is definitely very cost-effective, and I think he's... Uh, pretty decent as an orc war boss and he's got his uh, banner that gives him poison which is all pretty cool and fine and dandy that said uh azag on skull is a little shall i say underperforming uh if we look at his stats you can see sure he does have poison and fairly high weapon strength and charge bonus he's very mobile but his stats are pretty abysmal 24 melee defense is pathetic 4300 hp is not very good certainly uh he's not particularly tanky he's only got 70 armor and um He's just fairly flimsy. I find that Azag's stats in close quarters on a Wyvern or, or on Skullmuncha are very, very underwhelming. And it's it's why I kind of wanted to mention him here. He's not necessarily an underpowered lord. It's more like he's just a weirdly weak lord. Uh, where rather than using Azag as a war boss who casts magic, you're mostly just using Azag as you would someone like Alariel or Gelt. Where you fly around, cast spells, and occasionally deign to land in combat if it's a really opportunistic charge you can land. And uh, I really feel like that's awkward for a war boss. I feel like it's not really fitting. And I do feel like Azag should get some buffs to his stats when he's mounted on Skull Muncher. Now, obviously, they probably don't want him to be as strong as he is on foot or have the stats that he has on foot. But I certainly think at least a plus 5, plus 5 to melee attack and melee defense could be a step in the correct direction. Maybe giving him another 300 or so HP would be the right fix here. Just make him a little bit tankier, make him a little bit more representative of a Greenskin Lord and... Uh, just make him a little bit of more of a brawler, a little bit more of a beefcake, because that is what Azag is supposed to be. He's supposed to be a brawler. Um, he's supposed to be a fighter, and he just isn't. So next up, uh, we do have the Orc War Boss, and here I actually wanted to cover both the Orc War Boss on the Wyvern as well as an Orc War Boss on foot. So we actually have an Orc War Boss over here on the enemy team as well, and you can see my issue with the Orc War Boss is quite frankly the squishiness. Um, and the flimsiness of the boss. Now, now, 
normally foot lords are already kind of a bit under tune in the game uh at least melee foot lords but generally one of their gimmicks is they're fairly survivable but the orc war boss doesn't really come across that way pitiful armor of only 70 is really kind of weak uh he doesn't have the best melee stats in any department either melee attack or melee defense uh pretty good charge bonus for being on foot but that is about it and his hp is pathetic 3300 for a foot lord now you might say well that's more than like a sorceress yeah sure by like 400 gold or 400 hp uh and you compare him to someone like word sag who we have back there who has almost 31 who has barely basically 200 less hp um not sure he's got physical resistance exchange for some armor there are a few tweaks here and there some less melee defense on word sag but the simple fact of the matter is that an orc war boss is not noticeably tankier than many squishy or fairly middling survivability non-melee lords he has i think 300 more hp than an elf princess that's pathetic for someone who's supposed to be an orc brawler orcs one of their big selling points is the fact that they're tougher they're meaner they're greener they're tougher than everybody else and orc war boss is not that and i think a first good start for, to help the orc war boss um because he used to be a fairly viable character back in the day when he had push toughness is bumping his hp up bring him up to like grimgore tiers of hp or close to it maybe not quite grimgore tiers because he's not supposed to be grimgore but give him another 500 hp make him tankier make him sturdier give him a little more armor don't make him just this sad pansy get who basically can't fight his way out of a white paper, out of a wet paper bag because the stats don't permit it. Next up, we do have the war, war boss on the the wyvern, and he basically this is a repetition of what I said about Azag. Um, the, the, he's not a terrible lord. Uh, he's very mobile. He does have okay weapon strength. He's got good charge bonus. Uh, he does apply poison, but fact of the matter is he has very low HP for what you'd expect from an orc. Um, and his melee stats are kind of weak again, 45 and 31, uh, not impressive. Uh, it's basically just Azag with minus 5 melee attack, plus 5 melee defense. And once again, I really think that the Orc War Boss should get another plus 5, plus 5 on top of his, these base stats. Um, make him more viable combat here. Give him some more HP, build him up by like 300 HP, 400 HP. Make him tank here, but boost his melee stats a tiny bit. Uh, I understand that Orcs are not supposed to be the most refined fighters, but they are supposed to be tankier. They're supposed to be able to hit, take some hits. And I think part of the reason why you never see these melee lords because because they're not noticeably tankier than a lot of the caster hybrids. Or War Boss is literally no tankier than Azag uh, in any situation, unless it's in straight melee. But even in melee, he's not much tankier because he's only got 31 melee defense, which is still bad. Um, and on foot, like I've just mentioned, they're basically no tankier than Azag is on foot or Wurzag is on foot or many other factions foot lords are, are uh like i said a high elf princess is like 300 hp less than an orc war boss which is ridiculous that's a that's a weird gap um so those were the first few finally grimgore ironhide now you might notice scarshnik is not here i don't actually think scarshnik belongs in this troubled tier i think scarshnik is actually fairly tanky right now he's got a monstrous hp pool for what he is he's very cheap uh he does have some very nifty aoe abilities he's got his prodder as well which is not bad um scarshnik's not terrible he's cheap he's fun he's not an amazing lord certainly but he's also not weak and that because of that he's not making the cut here uh, for those of you who might be wondering but grimgore ironhide certainly is now grimgore has been improved a good bit i don't have him or he's not equipped here with gitznik but um gitznik has been buffed obviously grimgore has been gaining more armor he's up to 120 his melee defense has gone up from what used to be a measly i think 38 or 35 maybe up to 45 over the over the years or months uh his weapon strength has gone up his charge bonus is still a monster 70 um and he's still not very good. Uh, now, Grimgore's whole shtick is the fact that he's a murderous beefcake. And I really do think that Grimgore should be pushed towards being like Throg, the Troll King. Uh, he should be a monster that beats the crap, that makes your enemies fear coming close to him. Uh, he should be able to create essentially a no-go zone pocket, uh, which Throg kind of does create. Uh, Throg makes it very difficult for enemies to... Uh, to um, sort of engage around it because Throg does have Frostbite, Throg does have Anti-Large, Throg's, well, not super mobile, is mobile enough to stay on top of a target, uh, and he's got a good bit of HP plus regen, so while he doesn't have the raw armor pool of Grimgore, he's generally tankier anyway, uh, and I really wish Grimgore would be pushed more towards that. I think Grimgore could go with another, honestly, straight up thousand worth of HP, um, I think Grimgore could go with some resist increased, resi just maybe even straight up immunity to knockback, and... Make him 
just a denial tool. The fact that right now he can't really deny anyone, he's kind of let make him and, and finally give him better splash. Make 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 it so Grimgor can put enemies on a timer so you can cleave through infantry. If you get him in a good fight, you can just cut through them very, very quickly. Um because right now Grimgor just doesn't do that. He doesn't really put your enemy on a timer. Your enemy can just kind of bog him down. Uh, even if Grimgor is fighting elite troops, he's going to be struggling to really pay for himself. Uh, so besides charging while he's not that good, and if you just want a lord to charge while safely, Skarshnik's a better go-to just because he's got more HP and he's cheaper. Uh, so in most cases, Skarshnik's just better. And Grimgor's kind of left in the dust. And I do think that if Grimgor had a lot more HP and was either a little more... I guess threatening to enemy lords if he could he had a better opportunity to sort of uh, hit back at them, um, then I could see him being just a little bit better. Maybe have more splash so you can actually put your opponent on a timer when he's crushing his way through uh, infantry mobs. And so that that is something I felt that Gringor could do with. There are certainly other options like making Gringor straight up large and making him like Throg 2.0 essentially. I've seen proposals like that. Uh, I don't want to. I don't feel it should be something that extreme, though. Certainly, maybe that would be it. Um, but definitely, Grimgor still needs help. He's still not a competitive lord choice. He's still essentially a meme choice uh, alongside the uh, orc war boss. And so, I felt that it was worth mentioning him here. Now, onto the units. And you might be noticing I've got all these boys here. The sad big guns and that. And these guys are not here because they're bad. These guys are here as a point of reference for comparison for when we discuss the big guns, which will be in a little bit. First and foremost, though, I do want to touch on the Night Goblin Fanatics and Night Goblin Archer Fanatics. There isn't much to be said for these two units. Um, they are bad. And the reason they're bad is because they have a ridiculous micro tax, especially if you want to bring multiple units of them. Uh, so you can see these guys look mean. They look green. They look pretty ridiculous with their silly pointy hats. Um... And they've got this cool ability, Spinning Loons. And I want to say before anybody is saying that Spinning Loons is powerful, it is very, Spinning Loons is a very powerful ability. For what, how relatively cheap this unit is, for the fact that you can throw it out three times in a game, um, it's actually a pretty potent ability. It can definitely cleave through infantry. It can definitely um, do a lot of damage to clumped up units. Uh, you can use it to harass any backlines a little bit, especially if your opponent has short range, short range shooting. It's not a weak ability at all. Um, it's actually pretty potent. The problem is that it's inc an incredibly micro-taxing unit, and this is similar to, say, gyrocopters or the Phoenix Bombs for other factions. Um, it's just so micro-intensive, to, especially if you have multiple units of Night Goblin Fanatics, trying to make sure each and every one of them gets their spinning loons off is ridiculously difficult, and it's a spell that really requires timing. You need to be able to cast it a bit further away from your opponent, because otherwise the spinning loons don't really hit very much with enemy unit. So it takes a good bit of timing. Um, it takes a huge amount of micro that you probably don't have. Greenskins are surprisingly micro-intensive faction as is, so you probably don't have the micro to waste on these guys. And the end result is that Spinning Loons don't really pay for themselves. They're usually kind of useless. Um, and that's just uh, unfortunate. And I, I do think a very easy fix. And the other thing is, of course, it's very difficult to target the ability. Oftentimes you'll have, weird, um, you'll have weird targeting. So let's say we start the battle here so I can demonstrate it. And you try to focus. And you can see just how wonky the targeting is here with the terrain. And it's like not really... And it, then if you're moving the unit around and you're trying to lock on... And it's just very messy. Um... You can see this guy's already gotten hit by something. He's already overcast, probably, and lost some HP. But that does show that the Night Goblin Fanatics, they, they're just very micro-intensive. They're very frustrating to use. Uh, personally, I think there's a few fixes that could be done here. One is make auto-cast an option. Don't make it forced, but allow people to just right-click on Spinning Loons, make it auto-castable, and once you reach within a certain range of your opponent, Spinning Loons immediately gets casted. This will result in a little bit of friendly fire because your units will catch up with the initial Loon cast. Um... This will be baitable, of course. If your opponent runs in with a hero, they can bait it out. But at the same time, it does mean that spinning loons... and Or, for example, if your opponent just hits like the edge of the spinning loon cast, then it's not going to get full value, maybe. But at least it will mean that spinning loons can now get some value. If you're just charging a unit, you can, and it'll get thrown out. Let's say a unit is like right here. Spinning loons will get thrown out. And it'll, it'll like spin out there uh, in like a little bit of an arc, and hopefully hit that unit effectively. Uh, second of all, I could I would like if it had some sort of slow effect rather than simply disrupting units, also slow units, make it a little bit better against cavalry. This is mostly to help Night Goblin Archer fanatics. Right now, Night Goblin Archers don't get much value out of this spell at all because they're not even in the fight. They're usually cowering in the back and. By the time they're getting charged, they're probably completely screwed anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I think that giving Night Goblin Archer Fanatics 
uh, or making giving the ability to slow, so that Night Goblin Archer Fanatics could use it as an escape tool or as a snare or pseudo snare would be very, very useful. And uh, so that was something I wanted to discuss here, just how useless this unit essentially is. Uh, otherwise, not, basically, Fanatics are not worth it without at least some changes. They're, they're never a worthwhile unit besides the Regiment of Renown. Or if you really want to be memeing hard. Uh, but otherwise, just no. Next up, Squigs, uh, before we get into the Boar Boys, because they are a whole segment of them, in and of themselves. Squig Herd is a unit that I think is decent, but needing some tweaks. Uh, for 500 gold, the unit is competing with Nasty Skulkers, essentially, for a semi-flanky AP anti-infantry tool. And Skulkers are just straight up better. Um, similarly bad leadership. Uh, certainly you do have Squigs on Wild, which boosts leadership on the unit for a little bit. But Nasty Skulkers have Smoke Bombs, which is huge. It lets you snare big targets. Nasty Skulkers have um murderous uh or opportunist murder which is amazing huge buff of an ability um and you, they don't rampage so one of the big problems with squigs is that you can be charging your opponent sh shoots like a volley of arrows into you the unit immediately rampages and because it's only got 50 armor it's probably not going to tank very well so you, you lose like 900 hp on the unit 950 hp and the unit rampages and it, if it flies into anything like spearmen or something it's destroyed it's screwed and you've now lost 500 gold worth of units for very little if any gain and um unfortunately the unit just is a bit overpriced for what it does uh, as a kamikaze unit um that's very easily baited out and forced to aggro uh, i think it's just troubled and not worth the potential failure um as to what could be done to really fix it, I think just a little bit more HP would be a good start. I think like 300, 400 more HP. Nothing too crazy. I actually think the unit's relatively decent, but uh, just a tiny bit more HP I think could be good. Maybe giving them a scaly skin, something because they are after all squigs. Look at, look at these guys. They're really nasty. They got wards. They're, they might be like a little scaly. Maybe they can resist fire a little bit. Give them a tiny bit of missile resistance maybe. Make them harder to bait. Uh, because right now you can basically invest a single volley of arrows and a spearman unit. And you delete squigs for almost no loss, and that's really kind of sad. And the unit's not terrible otherwise. For 500 gold, it can do a lot of damage. It does munch munch through enemies. It's pretty good AP values. Uh, definitely not terrible, but uh, simply put, that lack of uh, survivability and easiness of baiting is an issue. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, and that is boar boys. So, um, well, there's a lot to be said for these guys, and uh, they're well, yeah, they're all. I think suffering from much the same issue. Um, and quite frankly, right now, Boar Boy and all their variants are pretty shit. Uh, they're, they're a fairly un, unusable unit. And uh, that is not, well, I shouldn't say unusable, but they're very difficult to use and very underperforming unit. And um, one thing I do want to clear up, though, uh, before we dive into discussing them, is the fact that. And one one of the things uh, I think people under I do think people underestimate the units a little bit. Certainly, boar boy big guns and boar boys can do some damage. They're not necessarily a terrible unit. I think it's worth mentioning that boar boy big guns do still beat most cavalry within their price range, if by only virtue of their high HP pool. Um, same with savage Rook boar boy big guns. Uh, in some of my testing, they actually beat questing knights uh, in a straight up fight. So the units have some potential, and I don't think they're as bad as people make them out to be. The problem is that in these isolated tests, it doesn't reflect battlefield conditions and uh, some of the huge limitations on these units, and that's something I really want to discuss here uh, and discuss what some of the fixes might be. Um, so if we look at the units, so there's a few things clear. All of them have all of them have AP. Savage Orc, Boar Boy Big Guns, Orc, Boar Boy Big Guns, Savage Orc Boys. All of these units do have AP. That is kind of factored into the cost. Uh, all of them are also very badly armored. 25 armor on the Savages, plus, of course, the innate 25% physical resist, and then a measly 60 on Big, big Guns, 50 on normal Boar Boys. Um, and only one of these units has shields. So they're very vulnerable to damage. Anything non-AP, AP, whatever, will destroy these guys. Next problem, leadership is pretty pitiful on most of these guys. It's a baseline of 58 on the Savage Orc Poor Boys, 65 on Orc Poor, or 60, sorry, on Orc Poor Boys. Uh, Orc Poor Boy Big Guns, I do believe, sit at a grand total of 68. And uh, Savage Orc Poor Boy Big Guns are also sitting at 68. So there's a very, very bad leadership. Um, if we look at even Rice Guard or Empire Knights, who are not, Empire Cavalry is actually one of the worst off cavalries as far as leadership goes. Uh, even Rice Guard is 72 leadership. Knights have 70 which for a unit that's not considered very good in the leadership department in the cavalry realm is a huge gap. Savage Orc, 
orcs are just so bad in comparison. Uh, like peaking at 68 and with the lower end ones sitting at 58 and 60, which is very, very weak. So that is one big problem on top of the low survivability. Um, then there are their pitiful combat stats, uh, or the, well, then their speed, which is also very bad. All these units have actually sub-heavy cav speed. So the cl only unit here that's actually on par with the slowest heavy cav of other factions, like Reichsguard, um, Chaos Knights, <laughs> units like that. Keep, this is the units we're comparing them to here. Has six, That's Savage Rook War Movie Guns, a unit that has 25 armor and 25% physical resist. Um, so yeah, that's kind of bad. And then, finally, we do have their combat stats. Now, weapon strength is not actually particularly good. It's AP, which is cool, but it's fairly low weapon strength. It's only like 30 weapon strength. And melee attack and melee defense is not amazing. Melee defense is terrible on literally all these units, uh, ranging from 22, a uh, grand total on the Orc War Boys, um, to the bottom tier of the Savage Orc War Boys, who all sit in at 14 both big guns and normal ones just terrible that is horrible by ca any cavalry standards there's i don't know if there's any other cavalry that's as bad like I think the only other comparable unit to that is like dire wolves who are complete throwaway backline harass um so that's a huge gap and then melee attack which is bad on the normal orc board boys and it's not amazing on the big guns given that they do have frenzy uh they don't get a bonus rich large like the savage just do um it's definitely better it makes them a little more viable but it's not amazing either. Uh, the units don't have amazing weapon strength. Like we mentioned before, they are very squishy. They're very flimsy. Uh, it's just uh, and it's just problematic. They they don't trade particularly well into enemies. And of course, with that low leadership, that frenzy is not necessarily going to last as long as you'd like. Uh, finally, they do have a few. They do have a few perks. Their charge bonus is fairly high on these units. The HP pools are relatively high. Um, I say relatively though, because Orc War Boys especially, forty nine fifty looks decent. But then you compare it to stuff like Empire Knights or Silver Helms. Or Cold One Spear Riders, for example, and it's like a three or four hundred gap H in HP, uh, which certainly isn't compensated for in with the, how bad the armor and the uh, melee defense and survivability of these units is elsewhere. Uh, it's just not compensated for. Now, certainly these cavalry units are cheaper, uh, which is worth mentioning, but uh, yeah, that the the. They're just their HP just isn't that high, and uh, or big guns who do have a lot, quite a bit higher HP, fifty-seven, sixteen, definitely not bad. Uh, it is still largely undermined by the fact that they have such very low melee defense and um, very bad armor. So. A few things though that I would like, like to discuss. Now, obviously, all of the orc cav is cheaper. The only one that's more in the line with other cavalry is the savage orc war bigans, who are an 1100 gold cavalry unit. And stat wise, they kind of fit there. They've got pretty good charge bonus. They do have a fairly hefty uh, HP pool. They do hit okay at 37. Keep in mind they have 45 models, and like say cold ones who only have cold ones knights, for example, only have uh, 36 models. Uh, they have much more HP than a lot of those units. Uh, and so they're not necessarily terrible for the, but the problem is, so one of, one of the things is that, yes, the, uh, both the Orc War Boys, so I, sh I should separate it, the big guns and the non-big guns, because normal Orc War Boys have their own, own issues. So the thing with Orc War Boys is they do have bonus versus large, and they in fact trade rather well into enemy cavalry. Not amazingly well, they'll still get, take a pounding, one of the big problems is they will get the crap beaten out of them by a lot of non-AP cav. Um... Because their armor is just bad and their melee defense is bad. So a lot of non-AP cav will just plow into them. And while there's a lot of HP to chew through, there's a lot of meat to cut through. That meat is not well armored and it doesn't have melee defense to protect itself. So one of the problems is that Orc War Wibbingans will take a lot of damage in return. If they're fighting other enemy units. And on top of that, they also do struggle... Uh, that's it. That's it. Okay. So that aside, they will they will beat most calves sort of within their price range. But that said, they are going to struggle to actually get that fight first and foremost because they are slow, slow as hell. Sixty two speed is terrible. It means that you're not even able, you're not able to pick your fight with basically any cavalry. Your opponent can easily just bait and switch you with like spearmen or something. Um, you could try to force the fight with like spider riders or supporting tools, but at that point, you're also looking at your opponent investing some in supporting tools, and that is generally going to get even uglier. 
certainly walk and skew things a little bit in your favor as well, giving you a slight boost to speed and charge bonus and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, forcing a fight is very difficult for Orc Warbites because they're just so slow. Um, they're not. They're not really able to. They, they just can't force a fight. Um, the other problem is that even when they do win that cavalry fight, um, even when they do say beat that unit of Silverhelms or Reichsguard or whatever you had issues with, they now are not very good against enemy infantry. They're actually atrocious against enemy infantry. I did some testing. Cold One Knights thrown in against Empire Spears in a wide formation will basically beat the spears to a bloody standstill they'll probably lose but it's going to be very close in comparison spears against savage orc boar big guns even spread out to max sort of maximize impact area and everything will completely beat the crap out of them and keep in mind there's only a 50 gold difference between these units and yes orc boar big guns do have more hp per um they do have more hp per model they're much tankier and all that but it just doesn't the thing is that's not going to matter they're not able to cut through they don't have the melee attack the melee attack is a pitiful 22 the melee defense is 20 look at reichsguard for example sitting at 34 and 28 and that's not even a top tier sort of cavalry as far as stats go um so that's just terrible and the bonus versus large doesn't come into play infantry will beat the snot out of you plus you're too slow to cycle charge properly um Church the charge bonus is nice, but it's really just not that devastating. They're really not that efficient. They can't stay and crush archers very effectively, for example, because most archers have decent enough melee defense to tank through it. Another problem is that <coughs> there are factors that don't happen in a normal just 1v1 cavalry fight. For example, psychology. Fear, terror, especially huge against these units. You've only got 68 leadership as we discussed before that means with the rear charge fear and terror kicking in you can easily route uniform board by being on and plus they're taking a lot of damage in that fight because they were so very squishy they've got low armor they've got low melee defense so their leadership buckles very easily and as a defensive tool you already have nasty skulkers um you already have black orcs who have very high mass so they're kind of difficult to dislodge for enemy cavalry uh, so from an offensive standpoint, the Savage Orc begins fall flat on their face because they're just not able, even if they do win the cavalry fight, they're not able to really exploit that fact. Certainly not cost effectively or very efficiently. And on a defense, from a defensive standpoint, their bad leadership means that anyone who's really aggressively going after you and with the cavalry force is going to beat you, crush you. They'll just blow you up with leadership bombs and you're going to be done. Uh, you're not going to be able to pull anything that back there. And if your opponent and... Yeah, it just, it just doesn't work as a, they're just not that good as a defensive force because of how easily they buckle leadership wise, and um, because of how squishy they are, because of how flimsy they are, they, they just, just can't do the job in my opinion. Uh, and with the normal orc, savage orc boys and orc boys, I think it's exacerbated by the fact that they're overlapping with squake hoppers. Now I don't have a unit of squake hoppers here on the field unless the automated AI force got one. I don't think it did, unfortunately. That's just the normal squake herd. Sadly, what can you do? But. Uh, these guys are competing with squake hoppers, and the thing is that basically both units are only really good against enemy infantry anyway. Um, and not even particularly effective at that. But squake hoppers are cheaper, they're quicker, they're much better at positioning themselves and getting that nice charge into your opponent. Um, none of these units have fear, unlike, say, Cold One Knights or whatever, so there's no real benefit to getting Orc Boar Boys into a backline over the fact that you got Squig Hoppers in there. Squig Hoppers have a bonus for infantry, makes them a little more efficient. Squig Hoppers also have immunity psychology, so it makes them harder to route out, root out, that sort of thing, uh, especially with psychologically heavy factions like Vampire or, uh, Coast or units like that. Um, and so that's just undermines the units. So what do I think could be done to fix them? And I, I know I've been ranting and raving here for a bit. And... First and foremost, well, there's two things that define orc infantry. They hit like trucks, and they have huge HP pools. And of course, and I guess high, high charge bonus. Those are the three things that orc infantry is going for them. Um, not much else. Their melee stats are not particularly amazing. Certainly not by the records of the, the standards of their price level. Uh, they're not necessarily well armored. Some of them are literally, literally butt naked and don't run around with any armor. So that's something. But uh, compare them to savages, or compare the uh, orc boar boys to orc normal orc boys and you see that there's one big difference the weapon strength on savage or orc boys and orc poor boys and all these or all the boar units their weapon strength is very low it's only in the 30s even with bonuses for large coming into play um even with frenzy coming into play a tiny bit the other thing is that frenzy of course doesn't affect the savages as much because it doesn't really boost it doesn't boost ap damage so it's basically nothing 
to the non-AP uh, because you have almost no non-AP. Non so low weapon strength. And even with the bonuses of Rich Large coming into play, it's very low weapon strength. You've got like 32 plus uh, 12. So you're looking at like 44 weapon strength per swing as opposed to Cold One Knights who have 42 baseline. Uh, and that's stacked up with a bonus reserve of 14, so up to 56. So a huge gap in uh, damage output. And I think that is one thing that could be done immediately just to buff Orc Boys a little better. Make them hit harder. Make them hit like trucks. They are Orcs. They are not Pansy Elves. They are not humans. They are not even... They, yeah, they're not humans. They are basically should be on par with like Saurus. That's basically what Orcs are, especially Orc Boar Boy or Orc Big Guns. Um... The fact that the weapons strength is so measly is really kind of sad. Uh, I think what could be really ideal here is bump prices up a tiny bit, perhaps, for Orc Boar Boys. Shift them up, so that way they're separated from the Sway Hoppers. Sway Hoppers are given more of an identity as an infantry killer. And the Orc Boar Boys are made more of a hybrid that can fight cavalry more efficiently. Give them higher weapon strength. That way, especially with some spell support, they can synergize more effectively. They can kill a little bit better. They can get more out of the short time when they're actually in the fight. Uh, and perhaps you're winning that fight so they're not suffering those massive leadership penalties. Otherwise, I do think um, a slight tweak to leadership, maybe plus two on the big guns would be nice, um, and a plus two on the Savage Orc War Boys, just to boost them up a tiny bit, would be nice to keep them a little bit more competitive. Keep in mind, these units don't have fear, so they're not immune to fear, uh, the way, say, Cold One Knights are. Um, they don't have any immune to psychology, except with Frenzy, but that's easily undone, because of how low their base leadership is. And... So I really do think that a good panacea, or at least semi-fix these guys, something that would make it a little more rewarding when you cycle charge them into infantry, that sort of thing, would be giving them higher weapon strength. And it wouldn't necessarily have to be the biggest tweak ever. Like, plus four or plus five weapon strength per model would probably be enough to swing the tide. And it could be, even be split like two non-AP, three AP, something like that. Um, but I think that would be a good fix for the Orc Boar Boys, and something that could push them up a notch in efficiency. Uh, because right now, Nasty Skulkers do the backline defense job better. And Squig Hoppers arguably do that job better as well because they've got immune to psychology. makes them hard to tear out. And uh, Squig Hoppers are better at the backline harass roll. Or cheaper. Or calf even. Uh, so that, that just puts these boys in a bad spot. And I think that could be remedied. Give them a boost to weapon strength. Bump up their cost a little bit. Obviously, Orcs are not supposed to be an elite in the cavalry faction. But make that cavalry a little bit better, especially with spell buffs on them. If Orc Boar Boys went, if every single unit here went up by like 50 gold and got a tiny bit more weapon strength for it, I think they'd actually be in a good spot. Um, or definitely a more competitive spot. Whereas right now, they're just kind of ill-defined and uncompetitive. Uh, that said, I know this has been a bit of a long, lengthy, ranty video, and I apologize, but uh, those were my thoughts on the green skins. Hopefully, the future videos are a little bit shorter and more contained because I think green skins are one of the worst off factions out there. Uh, if you guys have any of your own thoughts, opinions, comments, ideas on what could be done to fix the green skins and what plagues them, um, be sure to leave those down below. I honestly love to hear what you guys have to think. I, th I think there's many valid ideas. And obviously, I'd, uh, some of these ideas I've had kind of nicked off forms and whatnot, but uh, a lot of it's just been stuff I've kind of been thinking about. And I, I know a lot of people have their own ideas and opinions. And oftentimes, I'm, I, f I find that people often have some great ideas on what could be done to fix it. And I would really, like I said, I'd really love to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure to leave it down in your comments and critiques down below. Uh, share what your thoughts are. Maybe you don't agree with me either, and that's perfectly fine if you think, uh, you know, I, I, so I know people sometimes get value out of units that I just don't get value out of. It's why I've, it's actually one of the reasons that, for example, that uh, the Goblin Chariots aren't on here. Because I know that players like Gobbo King get massive value out of them and can run games with that, those units. And I can't make those units work. I struggle to. And, uh, but... I feel that it's not fair for me to discount a unit just because I suck with it. Um, and so, yeah, if you guys don't agree or you've had some great success or you think I'm underselling or overselling a unit, whatever, be sure to let me know. I, I'd honestly love to hear it. Uh, I do thank you guys for your patience. Hope you guys enjoyed. If this is something you'd like to see more of, I was hoping to make this a series. Uh, be sure to let me know. i uh, leave all your comments and all that down below. Thank you, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.